just got out of seeing the movie Joy, and I have a bone to pick with, I think it's the New York Times, I read a review of the movie, and they called it a Cinderella story, and it is so not that. It is the story about a queen, a sovereign queen, a kick-ass queen, a woman who rules from within, who knows herself, who won't take no for an answer. Uh, at the beginning of the book, or at the beginning of the movie, when Joy's a little girl, she's playing with a little uh, cardboard and paper set that she made of this queendom, and her sister leans in when she picks up the princess and says, doesn't she need a prince? And she says, no. No, she doesn't need a prince. That's her superpower. And then the movie proceeds from there. So this was like the most perfect movie for me to see kicking off 2016, the year of the queen. Um, I recommend anyone see it, but if you're interested in working with the queen archetype this year, this is a perfect example of that. She ain't no princess. She's a fucking queen. Woohoo! Kick-Ass Switch, putting the K in magic. I'm Joanna DeVoe, that's Queen Witch to you because 2016 is the year of the Queen, woohoo! And I really only mean that just for myself. That is my power word for 2016. The theme for Kick-Ass Switch is not the Queen, although I'm sure on social media and here, there, and everywhere, I will be talking about the Queen because I'm into it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling myself. I'm feeling myself. I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm feeling myself. And it's raining. And this room is very echoey and dark right now. So I have a lot of artificial light around me to try to make it light. And I can see looking at myself on my computer that I'm super faded and gauzy right now. But that's the best I could do with this weather. This is the last day of the hiatus that started for me in at Christmas time. I've done one blog post and one newsletter since then, but otherwise I've just been on hiatus, popping in and out of social media when inspiration struck. Uh, oh, and I did, um, for the Psycho Spiritual Wheel of the Year, I did a New Year hangout and if you attended that, this might look familiar to you because these are the pajamas I wore <laughs> to that hangout. I'm wearing them again today because as I explained to those of you who are there, these to me feel very queenly. So if I'm having like a day off where I want to hang out in my pajamas um, or even just when I go to bed at night, I like to wear matchy, matchy, girly, girly, girly pajamas because it makes me feel like a queen. It makes me feel good about myself instead of wearing like boxer shorts and a huge holy t-shirt or a pair of sweats that are all like dumpy and droopy in the butt. Like when I wear this, I feel good about myself when I look in the mirror, when I look down and it's Pink Leopard and if you're super girly like I am, I don't know how you can't love Pink Leopard. So that's why this is going on and I feel myself starting to ramble. So let me just say before I get too far into this video, what's in it for you? Because <laughs> this is going to be the first vlog of 2016 from me. I have listened to you all very carefully. Thank you so so much to those of you who filled out the co-creating 2016 survey that I sent out at the end of 2015. A whole bunch of you filled that out. I read each and every one of your comments. Amber, Amber, I don't know how to get to you, but you're like, I always see you in Glendale, and if I run into you, or I'm always hoping to run into you, you can run into me on purpose, girl. <laughs> Shoot me an email and we'll meet up for tea. Um, I love meeting people when they're coming through LA or especially if you live here, duh, don't be a stranger. That survey was actually anonymous, but she signed her name Amber. So uh, anyway, the rambling, all the rambling, that's what happens when I do a vlog. If I just turn the computer on and start talking, I'm a natural rambler. So back to what I was trying to say. <laughs> I listened carefully to those of you who filled out the survey and then just comments that came in when I was doing a very witchy vlogmas. I got a lot of people saying, can you please do more vlogs? 
a uh, few that was like, can you do a vlog every single day? Uh, no, <laughs> definitely not. But if you love that, you should go check out Jacqueline Dubois because I think she's been doing one just about every single day for quite a while now. And she's super witchy. Uh, and, but Cake Out Switch is a business. This is how I make my living. And so uh, I can't do only vlogs all the time. As fun as it is, I had a blast doing it. Um, so what I've decided to do is kind of meet you halfway. So the first week of every month will be a vlog. So I've recorded a little bit of footage for you after Vlogmas. So however much of that I have, I'm gonna stick on the end of this. And it'll be one of those little mashups that you probably got used to during Vlogmas. And I will do that at the top of every month, so it'll kind of be like a month in review. So the first week, I post every Thursday morning. So the first Thursday in February will kind of be like a January roundup. And if you're a guy and you're still listening to this, thank you. <laughs> I know I get, I'm girly. I don't know what to say. I love men. I always get along really well with men as friends. I definitely have that part of my personality. I have a very strong masculine side when it get when it comes to like getting shit done or um I think my taste in like furniture and cars and music I can always bond with men over that but I'm also like pink and girly uh, but if you're listening right now and you're a man this whole thing with the year of the queen if you end up following down below the link to get to my blog I am sharing this my day book in there and then some like inspirational quotes and tips for being personally sovereign so this applies to you if you're a man you know you just want to be working with the king archetype this year or any archetype or any power word that's just what I'm personally working with and I've had some people already ask me or declare I'm gonna work with the Queen too so I did a blog post on that talking about the Queen for those of you who want to work with the Queen or if sovereignty is your word that would be a really good thing to check out and also also <laughs> I'm very excited about this. I can barely contain myself. The theme for January is not the queen. That is my personal theme, as I already stated. Each month is going to have its own theme, like I started doing in 2015. I love that. I'm taking that forward with me, and I'm digging even deeper into it. So every month, there will be a new product on that theme. And then as my business is structured, it will all be on that theme. So every Tuesday, you know, Hippie Witch, the podcast, Hippie Witch Magic for New Age. It will be on that month's theme. Every Thursday's video, except for the vlog. The vlog, I will announce the theme. And then every Thursday thereafter in that month will be on that theme, as well as the blog post. I'm going to be sending the newsletters out. I always send them out weekly and vaguely weekend-ish. But from now on... They will be going out on Friday because I'm going to be taking a three-day weekend every single weekend in 2016 for myself because I need that space to be creative and I love to like give, 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 and give, but I have found the more time I take for myself, the more I'm able to integrate, you know, all the give, give, giving and all I've learned, I love to learn and like Ball, like shove information in but there needs to be a period of integration so I am giving myself three days off every single week and if you are able to create your own schedule that way I recommend giving that a try as well because I have found it to be very liberating something I learned in 2015 was taking time off it's a very good thing the more time off you take it seems if you do it intentionally and say like I'm coming back on this date it just sets your mind free in a way where you actually get more shit done it's a highly productive thing to do it's like conscious time I want to say time wasting but it's not time wasting it's conscious leisure time <laughs> so uh, that and then the thing I was trying to tell you about is the very first product of the year I will be creating 12 products for you this year one every month. This is also because I listened to you. The two things that you asked me for the most were tutorials 
10 ebooks. So every month there will be either a new ebook or a new tutorial. I did one last year called, it was the first of what I hope will be several power tools, and it was called Creating Thought Forms That Spring to Life. That did very well. You seem to like it very, very much, so I will be doing more of that. But the first product in 2016 coming from KCAS, which is an ebook, and I'm in love with it. I am madly, madly in love with it. I can't stop looking at the cover, so I will put a picture of the cover in the blog post down below. It doesn't launch until next week, but if you want five bucks off, you can pre-order it just based on your love for me and perhaps the love of the cover and the title because that's all you're getting for now. <laughs> if you like my work, uh, you'll probably like this a lot. I think it's just completely badass. It's not at all frivolous or girly. It's for everyone. And it is called The Spiritually Mature Witch, Five Keys for Unlocking Your Personal Power. I am deeply proud of this. If you can't afford to buy anything this year, that is okay. There will still be free radio shows and newsletters and videos and all that good stuff. Um, but this is the model that I'm using this year, so if you care about my schedule, that's my schedule. Another thing that was very clear when I got the survey results back is that the two things you struggle with the most and you want the most help with are money and focus. So I will definitely be keeping that in mind in terms of creating products this year, videos, podcasts. I'm really going to focus, focus on focus and money because that's what you want to hear about. And I really deeply appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time to fill that out. Amazing! Um, something, somebody, uh, an anonymous somebody, because it was anonymous like I said, left me a comment saying something to the effect of, I really just, I really just would like you to do more vlogs because I really just like seeing the real you. And Thank you, <laughs> I'm glad you like my vlogs, that's awesome. But I also wanna say that every single thing, every single nook and cranny, every, every, everything that I do for Kick-Ass Witch is the real me. That's why I love this business. That is why I can go on year after year doing it. It takes a lot of self-discipline and focus and commitment to show up day after day after day after day and do this. And I can't do that if I'm not having fun, if I'm not being myself. So this is as authentic as I get. I have different sides to my personality. The vlogs are the goofy side of me. And then I also have the kick-ass side of me that likes to teach people, you know, all that I've learned personally in my life with this ongoing obsession with all things psycho-spiritual, personal development, magic, all that good stuff. And uh, it just got me off on this kind of mental rant that comments um, a lot of people when they only know me in a certain context or when they just first see me, um, they think I'm very goofy and very silly and it kind of shocks them if they end up working with me behind the scenes, either as a coaching client or on a project that we're working with together because I can be, I have a crazy work ethic. I like working and all of the goofiness kind of falls away when I'm really focused on what I'm doing and I know that that upsets some people <laughs> because it's not what they were expecting. Um, but I'm really into like getting work done and then if I'm working with you, I expect you to get the work done too. And in that way, I have always embodied the queen. I was born bossy. <laughs> when I was a little girl, I was always like, let's start a club. I'll be the leader and we will all wear matching jackets. Or let's have a play. I'll be the writer and the director and the star of the play and you can all be characters in the play or whatever it was. I'll be the teacher and you be the student. <laughs> I like, as soon as I could talk and like hold a pencil, I was doing stuff like that. And uh, that probably manifested in a lot of shadow ways when I was younger, but I've learned how to harness the queen in, in a way that's empowering and serves my soul's purpose and the people that I'm here to serve. And I actually 
started thinking about working with the queen archetype last year when I had an experience with someone like that that was extremely intense because I'll just make a long story short and say this person wanted to partner with me in business and this person, not saying if it's a man or a woman, <laughs> did not have their own crowd, their own audience. So basically we were just doing this for my personal, you all, for my people. And uh, it's so hard not to he or she this to death. <laughs> this person really, in the end, I realized didn't want to do the work, didn't turn anything in on time and essentially wanted to like shake you all down for more money. And I am, I'm a queen that way in that anyone in my queendom will not be shaken down for money. I love everyone. I treat everybody with kindness and I like to be of service. Of course I have to make money doing what I do, but I don't like someone coming into my queendom and being like, how can we get more money out of these people? They're not giving me money. And when you're not even showing up yourself with, you know, deadlines and things like that. So I was very patient. I was very aware of the language I was using. And this person still interpreted that as being rude. And it still upset this person to where they finally just cut off all communication with me. And I had to finish the project on my own, <laughs> which I was fine with. I totally did that. And hopefully they come around one day and see that um, I was being kind. I was just holding healthy boundaries. And that is so much to do with what the queen is about. And that's when I really started thinking, I think it's time to really step in to the queen. This idea of me being a clown, kind of, you know, and making people laugh. If you want to see me be a clown, I mean, the three vlogs from December that I would check out would be, I forget what the first part of it is, but it says something about dance fever, <laughs> dancing around the Verico in my gross cleaning clothes. That's a weird one. Or will you be a cat? Which is, I think, my personal favorite. Or the last one I did, which was, uh, a fool for you because I really just totally made a fool out of myself, which I don't mind doing. I think it's funny. I have fun, you have fun, we all laugh, it's all good. But as long as you realize, you know, that's not who I am. That's an aspect of I, what I am. And what I was talking about in that private hangout um, with the Psycho Spiritual Wheel of the Year group is that I think I'm a natural queen and I developed this court gesture to make the people around me comfortable. And that sometimes people, it's to my detriment. People think that that's who I am, period. <laughs> uh, I, I often quote when I notice people, like they try to take advantage of me because they think I'm naive or silly or uh, fluffy is what I get the most often. You know, I'll always, say this quote to them that I love by Sierra Bender and that's never mistake my kindness for weakness and I I hope that you all take that advice because you don't want to see the red queen come out <laughs> the off with the heads queen which is the shadow of the queen archetype but I'm not getting too into the shadow with this whole thing I'm really just enjoying it for now I feel myself starting to ramble and there's so much more I want to say this is my day planner for 2016, the queen. Uh, think like a queen, this is from a favorite Oprah quote of mine. Think with a, uh, think like a queen, a queen is not afraid to fail. Failure is just another stepping stone to greatness. So that's what this is inspired, um, inspired by largely and my love of Athena, the queen of swords. I share some of these pages in the blog post down below and how I pimped out this year's day planner. I've gotten a lot of questions about what day planner I'm using this year. No, I'm not using Danielle Laporte's Desire Map day planner. It was fun for a year. I committed to it, but I was really happy to get back to my old system. I have a system that I love. I shared that this summer, um, how I was making it work with uh, the Desire Map Day Planner, but I'm very, very happy to get back to my old system. And I share a little bit about that in the blog post down below. And um, my room is not done. <laughs> this is my bedroom that 
so many of you watched me painting and putting together um, post bed bunk gate in December, but I still don't have a bed and I still don't have my blinds hung and all kinds of things. So I will share that in February's vlog. But um, before I go, I just want to say a really cool little thing that kept happening um, after I chose the queen for uh, my power word for 2016. So many things like came forward to be like, yes, 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 this is exactly the word you should be working with. There was no question about it. There was no second place. There was no confusion. It was so clear to me that I needed to be working with the queen. The queen of swords is my tarot totem. Um, but then Kellyanne Maddox did a video on calculating your tarot card for the year ahead. I think it's something that she learned from Kim Huggins, but she made a great video showing you how to do this not too long ago, a couple weeks ago. I recommend checking it out. Um, but at first I was like, oh, do I want to do that because I'm really working with the queen and I really just want to keep that in mind for the year ahead. But I couldn't help it. Curiosity got the best of me and I did it. And I was so pleased to find that the card I drew, thank you Gretchen, by the way, for sending me a new Tarot Illuminati deck. Mwah! I love it so much. <laughs> but I drew, um, I calculated that the Justice card was my card for 2016, which is so perfect. I'm a Libra. Justice is associated with the Libra. And for me, I've already spoken about this in a podcast, I think, when I was talking about Tarot. but. I see Justice and the Queen of Swords as being like soul sisters. A lot of the messaging is the same. It's the same. And I was so excited about that. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, ah! Um, just a little me, me, me moment there. But also, in addition to that, during the private hangout that we were having at the beginning of the year, um, I asked someone to do a card reading for us, and Etsy pulled out her Halloween tarot, which is so cute. There's a little black cat in every single card, and it follows the Rider Waite Smith system. I love it. But the card that she pulled for all of us for the year ahead was the Queen of Bats, which is the Queen of Swords. <laughs> so it's like, yes, 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 yes. Um, and then just a little aside, ooh, let me get something to show you. Dang it. A been, I've been decrowned, oh, okay. <laughs> I wanted to show you this. Um, it kind of looks like a crown. It did when it was all lit, but I did Veronica Varlow's Words or Wands New Year spell coming into the new year. And uh, I can't tip it over too much for you because there's glitter and gold stars inside, but um, you know what? I think I already shot some vlog footage of this, so I'll just zip it, but um, queen! <laughs> this is something I did to usher in the new year. I'm still thinking about doing Molly Roberts. Um, she created this snow globe, I think with the Queen of Swords from the Terra Illuminati deck, where you shake up um, the snow globe and like glitter moves around. I think she used baby oil, which I don't even, I need to Google that to see how that works because I'm not really sure how the baby oil, it must like hold the glitter up better or something. But it's about keeping that in motion, that idea, and I love that. So I might still do her little spell for working with the word. I thought that was pretty cool. And then I've been working with, um, this is why I ran and got my uh, New Year Words or Wands spell, is because when I did that, I thought I was going to be working with frankincense oil this year, because I've been working with frankincense oil for a while. Anytime I do anything witchy, um, I always use the same scent for a long time. For years, usually, I used Kate's Magic Oil for a long, long time. And then I kind of moved into like using frankincense oil and lavender mixed together. Um, and the reason is because scent is like the closest to your psychic ability. It's the closest to your sense memory. It's a really great thing to use to slip into a meditative state, kind of on command. Um, and I thought I was going to be using frankincense this year because it felt very royal to me. You know, the three kings bringing those gifts for baby Jesus um, on Christmas. Frankincense is one of them. 
But right when I was about to do the spell, I was like, no, I need to be working with grapefruit. It wasn't a thought. It was a feeling or a download or just an impulse. So I ran into the kitchen right before I did that and I got grapefruit oil. Um, and it just felt perfect. It felt like fresh and clean and like new energy. So I'm gonna be working with grapefruit oil. And this is all you have to do if you want to use a scent. Use it anytime you're gonna do a magic spell, dress candles, maybe for a specific purpose. Maybe you wanna designate a purpose for it. I don't know. I do it right before I read tarot cards. Or if I'm just meditating, I rub it in my hands like this. That's it, um, but it's magical. I can already feel just from doing it right now, my energy just goes, hmm. <laughs> it just settles. And it makes me feel more grounded in the moment, even though it's grapefruit, which is a really energizing uh, fragrance. I just, I don't know, that's one of the things I'm gonna be working with with the queen, and I thought I'd share that with you. What else, what else, what else? Um, this is gonna be my new sparkly background. So <laughs> next week, hopefully it all goes well and I have this room all put back together. I'll be doing videos in here and there'll be a new sparkly background for my new queenly self. And until we meet again, here's a little vlog footage. Much love, peace. I'm so excited! It's Christmas day and we're driving to Bakersfield and there's You probably won't be seeing this video till January, but we don't get snow. That's why I'm yelling. Snow! Real snow! <laughs> snow, buddy! Snow, snow, snow! I can't believe we'll go up in the snow and, and see if there's rainbows. Oh my gosh, you think there'll be rainbows in the snow? Yeah. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. these little leaves they look like little fairies dancing down from the sky it is not fall <laughs> it's not really winter it's definitely not spring the weather in LA is just wacky the people are wacky and the weather is wacky but I love it Woohoo! it's raining buddy it has been coming down this hard since before the Sun came up and it's the afternoon now it's been Raining in LA! Woo! El Nino is here! Oh dear, that is a river. Our neighbor's yard has completely flooded. Holy smokes, it's flooding under their house too. That probably happens a lot where you live, but it doesn't happen where I live. Of course I'm filming this from the safety of my bedroom. That is... That wood pile right there is from that orange tree, which died it actually took a couple years for it to die but new life started coming up from the bottom a perfect example of how death is a sign for new life death gives birth to new life i love that the life death life cycle so we have a fine example of that in our backyard right now and oh, this was all cleaned and weeded and pulled out right before the rain so you see a lot of little piles of things but that pumpkin in the back I actually give my pumpkins every year to that big mulberry tree. Uh, it's sort of my wacky, witchy way of thanking the property I live on and not throwing the pumpkin in the trash because I never want to throw them in the trash. So they kind of slowly melt all year and then finally just co compost back into the earth in their own good time. And something you might not know is El Nino is El Nino in Spanish means the boy. And fishermen, I think, off the Gulf of Mexico named it that after baby Jesus because it typically happens around Christmas time that we in the South, we get rain sometimes. It's like a warm, 
front that comes off the ocean and creates this awesome rain for us, which we really, really need this year because you probably know California has been having a mega, mega, not good at all, dangerous drought. Holy moly! <laughs> this is about, I don't know, 10 million times harder and more messy than I thought it would be. This is a bunch of old picture frames and my rubber glove hand which I've ripped open. I was trying to paint this furniture. First I started out very subtly and it just kept dripping. And then I was like, okay, the drips are part of the plan. So I just started like laying it on super thick. By the time I got to this, which is actually a picture frame that I used to hang jewelry, I was like, bring on the drips, all oh, little polka dots, bring them on, bring them on. <laughs> Uh, but the sun's going down on another day, and I'm going to have to go back to Home Depot to get more paint. I, I will say this is pretty fun. Spray painting is fun. It brings out the vandal in me, I think. <laughs> and, like, even if it looks crappy, I think it's still going to look cool. It's going to look crappy cool. Crappy chic in 2016. It's so totally happening, man. This is actually a very wide doorway. And I insisted, you can see back there, nothing is done yet, except my dresser has been put back. And I wanted to put it here because I wanted to make space for that little altar area that I don't know if I've shown you or not shown you yet. So anyway, I used a little feng shui cure. Like feng shui is about keeping the energy flowing in your home and a cure is, you know, if you do something dumb, like, <laughs> make part of your dresser block the entryway, which I know that that is very, very bad feng shui. And I don't care, I'm stubborn, I want it this way. You do something to try to keep the energy flowing and flowing. So I have a round mirror and a round quartz crystal here. This is for new life. It's not a cool crystal. It looks like an egg to me, something hatching. And then these peonies, which I know I won't kill because they're made of silk. So here I am, having just completed a little New Year ritual hangout thingy with the witches of the Psycho Spiritual Wheel of the Year, and some of my queenly things. This is just this was just set up for our meetup. We had some rose incense burning there. Here is some grapefruit essential oil, a grapefruit candle, justice card to go with my queen vibe and then this is i'm really excited about this this i shared a picture on instagram and i will put that here i'll just stick it in the video as well for those of you who missed it because it was so beautiful when it was all lit up the candles this was a ritual that i did on new year's night not new year's eve but january 1st for the year ahead and I can't tilt this because it will spill out the glitter and the gold stars. But this was Veronica Varlow's, it was a ritual she designed called um, Words or Wands New Year's Spell. And uh, so the middle candle was the queen. I had three bigger candles, not bigger, smaller than the queen, um, but a little bit bigger than these little birthday cake candles. They represented my three core desired feelings, which is guided, supported, and blessed. And I mean that in the divine sense, to be divinely guided, divinely supported, and blessed. And then the five other candles, because there's nine candles in this ritual, were more about the material results that I hope to achieve in stepping into the queen archetype and working with those core desired feelings. There is my beloved Queen of Swords, who really, that's what really got me thinking about Queen Energy. Some rose incense from Maria. This is the New Year's first flower. So first thing, New Year morning, I woke up, went outside barefoot, walked around in the dirt in my bare feet to welcome in the new year, and then picked this camellia, which is still beautiful the next day. It's so pretty. And yeah, so that is my new year ritual. It was awesome. This has a little bell on it that I rang that I love. So cute. 
And if you're still watching, I can't resist showing you this. The Spiritually Mature Witch, five keys to unlocking your personal power. That is the correct price, it's $28. But if you pre-order it, you get five bucks off. That's just for this week only because it launches next week. So I guess that's that's your reward for trusting me blindly because you love me. Um, I'm really proud of this. I think it's awesome. That's why I'm ending this vlog with this. Until we meet again, much love everybody.